good evening or good uh, weekend should I say uh, bringing you a review of the uh, FTSE 100 from an intermarket analysis perspective for Monday's trading even though it's Easter uh, obviously uh, next week's trading should I say uh, which continues from the 7th of March 2015 onwards okay uh, now let's try and sum up exactly what's happening here first of all from a fundamental perspective okay so we had NFP that's going to be the negative uh, uh, factor that's going to hurt the sentiment uh, which already has hurt sentiment on a Friday um, given the um, obviously uh, jobs data was released over a holiday period and the futures FTSE or should I say the FTSE futures are currently trading at the uh, 6790 region around the 6800 level and the obviously US futures have, uh, have been hurt and uh, given the fact that the dollar has obviously fallen so First of all, negative job growth overall was negative. Uh, obviously, came in much lower than forecast, which really does push back the rate expectations now from June to September, uh, highly likely. Uh, but that obviously wasn't having a positive effect on, uh, on U.S. equities because all the concern now is regarding growth. Uh, and obviously, if there's no jobs, there's no disposable income. And those disposable income, as we all know, that makes up the majority of GDP. If there's no GDP or growth, then um, obviously when you've exhausted QE uh, you can't fall back on QE unfortunately and obviously if you do have rate hikes coming and there's no job growth and that obviously doesn't bode well for um, shall we say earnings going forward or obviously in terms of profit and obviously expectations as well because given the fact that the market is um, a uh, efficient obviously a discounting mechanism of the future so certainly doesn't bode well going forward so weak jobs uh, obviously uh, will weigh uh, and that will hurt sentiment okay uh, we also have election uncertainty in the UK uh, given the fact that we've had the leaders debate one another and there seems to be no clear winner uh, you've got the Labour and the uh, Conservatives neck and neck so that certainly creates a lot of uncertainty as to who will come into power and obviously the policy uh, or the framework that's going to exist going forward so we have that as a concern. Then we have Greece already. Obviously, we haven't still uh, or failed to reach, uh, obviously, or attempted to reach a deal as of yet. And there's a, a report from Spiegel over the weekend that the the that the uh, individuals or the Troika or IMF members walked out. And there's uh, the ex the uh, uh, disagreement still exists as to uh, the reforms that are going to take place in uh, obviously Greece and uh, how. Uh, how serious they're taking the negotiations and uh, there certainly seems to be a lot of rhetoric from the um, from both sides really but more from the Greek side uh, and uh, so that certainly doesn't bode well uh, going forward that will be negative for the euro regardless of the NFP so that's certainly something worth taking into consideration so you have the uncertainty regarding Greece and then we also have the uncertainty regarding Yemen as well. So that again, that's another um, a negative factor from a fundamental point of view. So, so you have NFP, you have Greece, you have Yemen. So geopolitics, socio-economics, uh, socio-economic concerns certainly weigh on from a fundamental perspective. Okay. Then we have the situation from a technical perspective. So let's observe the technicals and see exactly what's going to happen with regards to the FTSE 100. Okay. So the FTSE 100 um, technical perspective. Let's start with the actual volatility index because that is the uh, important index from my perspective. That's what it needs to be observed. Okay, as we can, as we all know, we've broken out of this uh, downward sloping uh, or tr descending triangle wedge. Call it what you want. We've obviously broken out. We're consolidating here. Obviously, weak NFP. Greece and obviously Yemen will cause the VIX or the volatility index in FTSE certainly to rise and that will be negative for the FTSE looking at around the $18, 18 level uh, obviously finding resistance uh, until then the FTSE will certainly be uh, under under resistance too okay looking at the FTSE 100 now going to a chart of the FTSE 100 okay let's go to a daily chart of the FTSE 100 as you can see we were consolidating regardless and we do have a bear flag formation. We've had this key trend line here, which again is vulnerable to breaking. And the next 
support level will be at 6760, 6750. Once we break that, then you have 200 MA. So I certainly see the 200 MA coming back into the equation. And obviously, horizontal support holding, and obviously, this, this um, expanding triangle or expanding uh, wedge, okay, or symmetrical wedge, call it what you want. Basically, it's uh, it's basically a broadening wedge, should we say, a uh, pattern that generally is, indicates uh, uncertainty and potential bearish price action. Okay, so going forward, given the fact that US markets have broken out of their key diagonal uh, rising trend lines, then I expect the FTSE 100 to certainly break as well on the downside. Uh, also, one more factor I forgot to uh, obviously take into the equation is Iran. The Iranian deal obviously does put pressure or further pressure on oil prices given the uh, the sanctions being lifted and the increase of supply into the market which is already oversupplied that again will have a negative effect okay so that certainly is bearish going forward okay so you're looking at six seven no uh, six seven hundred potentially even lower six 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 five six six seven five sorry as potential support on the downside in the FTSE 100 on a daily chart let's have a look at the FTSE 250 or even the all share index if I go to the all share for the all share again same pattern we have this key diagonal trend line which will be broken and the fundamental reason for it breaking is I've already explained especially with the NFP that certainly is the nail in the coffin and with the next support we have there around the 3600 okay the FTSE 250 let's bring up the FTSE 250 Again, the FTSE 250, obviously, we've had this bounce. Uh, it's a meager bounce, <coughs> and we are looking for a potential reversal, especially given the fact that uh, Sterling has uh, uh, obviously uh, potentially put in a bottom now, given the fact that NFP was so weak. Uh, obviously, that will cause the Sterling to rise, and that's negative for the FTSE 250. So if I bring up the chart of Sterling, that should give you a better example. with me okay so I've not added actually added in the currency so bear with me <coughs> need to add the currency back in again <coughs> excuse me Okie dokie, right, there we go. <coughs> Excuse me, okay, here we go. So, FTSE 100 on our daily chart. Okay, so, this is the Euro USD, sorry, the FTSE, and uh, the Sterling chart. <coughs> Okay, so here we go. Daily chart of sterling. Okay, so we've obviously broken out the symmetrical wedge as you can see here. Okay, we've broken out the symmetrical wedge to the upside, uh, and therefore it's potentially putting a bottom on the GBP USD. And that again, like I said, will be negative for the FTSE 250 going forward. Okay, so the FTSE 250, FTSE all share daily charts are all indicating bearish price action. Okay. Let's go to a smaller time frame now on the 60 minutes. Okay, 60 minutes we've had this inverted head and shoulders formation that was potentially in play. And obviously this scenario now is, is turned bearish and therefore we're looking for a potential move lower. Okay, that's basically what I expect to occur. Okay, uh, the next chart we're looking at is a 10 minute chart. As you can see here, we've held the horizontal resistance. And the next level of support will be 6800. Well, it was supposed to be 6800, but the futures obviously are lower than that. So, therefore, the next support level now is at the 6760 region. So, once the 6760 region unfortunately gives way, then the next level below that is 6700 and potentially even lower. Hence, the reason why the NFP data, along with Yemen, along with Greece, and the Iranian uh, oversupply on a, an oil market that's already oversupplied, will all bear. 
a bit have a negative bias uh, in terms of sentiment and in terms of momentum and money flow on the FTSE 100. Now, the only thing that's going for the FTSE 100 from a fun, from a, a bullish perspective is the chart the US dollar. Now, the US dollar is potentially putting in a well, it has put in a confirmed the top, but the dollar index will certainly help commodities to a large extent. But given the fact that the weaker data uh, and the weaker growth will certainly weigh on the FTSE 100 and obviously given into market analysis of the S&P and the US markets and the European markets a week then obviously it will have it will certainly weigh on the FTSE 100 in terms of the uh, bearish uh, price action below okay folks so risk on risk off wax on wax off goodbye